Western Greenland, hundreds of miles north of the Arctic Circle, one of the last vast unspoiled landscapes on Earth. Except it isn't. Surapalak, a tiny settlement of 60 people, it's the most northerly village in Greenland, likely in the entire world. A once nomadic community surviving on hunting, but now everyone here lives the modern throwaway lifestyle. An apparently endless wilderness and seemingly untouched by humankind. You'd expect the only debris you'd find on the shoreline here would be natural, discarded antlers of a dead caribou, perhaps. How wrong can you be? This is the beach at Sirapaluk and have a look. You don't need any words from me. A recent analysis by an environmental group in the south of Greenland found that almost all of the rubbish and plastic discarded on the coastline here had come from the immediate area. And all that in a vast landscape where there are fewer than 60,000 people. So whilst it's true, of course, that global plastic is an issue around the world for our oceans. It is also the case in Greenland that people are, frankly, soiling their own backyard. Greenland is an overseas territory of Denmark, a leading country on eco-policies. It was the first in the world to pass environmental laws. Yet here, in one of the most fragile environments on the planet, rubbish is simply swept into the sea. All human waste bagged up in thick black plastic, dumped on the beach as the tides come in to shore. This and all other waste washes into the sea. The problem isn't just tiny villages, it's all over Greenland. Further down the coast, the larger community of Kanak, around 650 people. And here, the tractor's just collected all the human waste from around the town. It dumps it into pits on the beach, dead dogs and all. The plastic sewage bags leak into a river of black sludge, snaking its way down to the ocean. This is the dump site at the most northern city here in Greenland. And what you see here is uh, household waste just placed beside this pristine waters of, of Ranak. I mean, this is incredible. Why, why are we doing this in the 21st century? We have very big problems with uh, household waste here in Greenland. And uh, there used to be a, an uh, incinerator here. It doesn't work. So now all the household waste is just put here next to the sea. And it, every time it blows, all the plastics Everything here just blows into the sea. It's terrible. Words can't convey the stench that hangs in the air here. This is the pristine world of the Arctic and in the 21st century, this place is an environmental crime and an obscenity. And the responsibility for that, of course, lies not with the local people, with the Inuit, the Greenlanders who live here, but fairly and squarely with the government of Greenland and with the government of Denmark. Anybody doing this in Denmark or anywhere in Europe would immediately face prosecution. The bags filled solely with human excrement and Greenland's Minister of Finance admits it is a problem. There's a great need uh, for waste management in general, not only in, in Kranach, but uh, everywhere in Greenland. We have passed uh, a waste management uh, plan on how to dispose of uh, the waste and to mitigate uh, pollution. But that plan is simply incineration, to burn everything that can't be disposed of responsibly. And as we see, nothing, not even human excrement, is thrown away properly. Burning rubbish, hardly a solution, emitting toxic gases into the air. We don't have uh, the necessary facilities to, to dispose of uh, hazardous materials like chemicals, etc. So we need to, to have um, uh, agreement with other nations uh, for disposing uh, those materials. First among those other countries 
Denmark given her historic responsibilities for Greenland. And rubbish isn't the only pollution issue here. Copenhagen is set to become the world's first carbon neutral city, but this part of Greenland is entirely run by fossil fuels. This town exists only because Denmark forcibly moved the Inuit people here from their ancestral homeland to make way for an American military base. The village of Kanak, bathed in 24 hour sun during the summer months, but not a solar panel in sight or turbines to capture the Arctic winds. Unbelievably, it is a diesel powered ice melting machine which provides the village with some of its fresh water. The hope for change lies with people like Carl Sandgreen, a tour operator who started a 30 kilometer beach litter pick. The harbour, you will see it. Um, it's very mess. It's a big mess. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, if you have a plastic bag, you throw it away. Um, if you have a, c a cigarette, you just throw it away. Every individual has to take a responsibility. Just not wait for the, for the authorities. Though here, as everywhere, not everyone's getting the message. But Carl can't do it all on his own. Greenland needs help in stepping up to its responsibilities and cleaning up this most vulnerable of environments. Alex Thompson, Channel 4 News, Western Greenland. Well, joining me now via the internet from South Jutland in Denmark is John Bergvolt, who's climate advisor to one of the Danish political parties, the Red Green Alliance. Thanks very much uh, for joining us today. Human waste in plastic bin bags dumped by the edge of the sea, washed into the water, an absolutely beautiful part of the world with no capacity to safely dispose of its waste. How has this happened? There's many reasons why it happened, but... But one of them is, of course, that, that the infrastructure of Greenland, being a country the size of Western Europe, is extremely difficult um, to handle. Um, and a lot of these cities, maybe two, three hundred people live in them. So you can't have waste facility plants at every one of them. And at the same time, Greenland is also a country with many, many issues, social issues, welfare issues, um, unemployment issues. And therefore, unfortunately, uh, environmental issues often is pushed down the ladder of, of, of priorities. Um, and, and thus, we, we are so unfortunate to see these horrible problems in Greenland. But isn't that an argument for Denmark to step in and do something about this? I think it's important to understand that the relationship between Denmark and Greenland is, is not Denmark doesn't in any way own Greenland. Greenland is a sovereign nation in so many ways. Uh, it has its own parliament, uh, its own prime minister. The only areas which are actually covered by Denmark right now is the foreign policies and the military. Um, I do think there's an argument to be had that if Greenland asked Denmark, Denmark should be morally obliged to help Greenland. But at the same time, Denmark can't just enforce ourselves onto a sovereign nation that would be infringing on their rights as well. But when you heard in the film there, the Minister for Finance say, we just don't have the necessary infrastructure to deal with its hazardous waste. As you've sort of hinted, there is a moral obligation, surely, for a wealthy country like Denmark to step in and do what it can. Most definitely, and, and if, if Greenland in any way wishes to work together with Denmark to solve this issue, uh, at least I can promise that my party uh, would be very willing to, to look into how we can help solving it. Uh, but it must also be an initiative that comes from Greenland and, and with the Greenland government leading to solutions. But what do you think could be done if Greenland, for example, were willing to accept help? I think one of the... Of course, again, remember that Greenland is the size of Western Europe uh, with winters that are dark, minus 40 degrees Celsius. It's not an easy area to operate in. But if you look at the waste management, at least for the West Coast, 
a waste facility management plant in the capital of Nuuk, for example, and then transporting the waste from the western part of Greenland down to that waste management facility would definitely be a viable option. Um, so there are many options that can be taken, and also just composting uh, waste in, in the small uh, settlements, for example. There's a lot of different things that can be done. And very, very uh, briefly, Greenland government said today it would, would create two new incinerators. Is that an answer? Is that part of an answer? I think incinerators can be a part of the answer. Um, but, of course, you can't just burn all of it. Some of it, as was said in the, in the interview as well, is hazardous waste that needs to be handled in different ways. Sure. Uh, John Bergwell, so, uh, so sorry to cut you off there. We have to finish, but thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you. You're welcome.